Hi everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Midweek Market Update. I'm Ashley Roster with Victory Fiduciary, and today I really want to spend a lot of time getting into what we've been seeing in the market. Uh, over the past two weeks, we have been in a corrective type process, and as you may remember, if you've been following us from the very beginning, that we have really just had concerns all along with how far the market had had gone, how quickly, and how far away from fundamentals and valuations we had gotten. And so, uh, with since September second, we have seen ourselves to um, to be in a process of correction, and we'll kind of get into detail with that. Um, certainly, none of this was unexpected. It, it was actually quite expected. I think the only unexpected part was that you never really know what the triggering point for a correction is going to be. And so this time around, it seems like uh, finding out that uh, markets are not going to get what they wanted, which was going to be additional stimulus coming um, from the government. It looks like for right now, that is off the table. And I think markets were pretty disappointed about that. And then now you add in the, um, the idea of having a Supreme Court justice seat that's now um, open. And so there's a lot of turmoil with that, and I think the markets in general, um, their concern we see in Europe soaring COVID cases and countries like Britain that are saying that they may have to go into additional lockdowns. So, you know, kind of all these extra exogenous events coming into play here into a market that was already overvalued, overheated, and just kind of was waiting for that accelerant to finally light. So uh, that's where we are right now. So again, September 1st, we were at all time high. September 2nd, we began to see the uh, corrections across the board with, with the major indexes. The NASDAQ um, particularly, which again, you know, we'll get into. You'll remember the NASDAQ was actually trading two standard deviations above its long-term moving averages, and I kept saying, this is not sustainable, this is concerning. If you have significant portions of your holdings in the NASDAQ, you really should consider taking some off the table just because we know that they were not sustainable just from a technical standpoint. And so let's get into what we're seeing. So right here, this is just a candlestick chart of the S&P 500. And so you can see way up here to be top, that's going to be um, where we were September 1. And so you can see here we are with our sell off here. As of the close of today, so this is actually as of the close of yesterday, as of the close of today, which actually happened when I was on my way into the office, the S&P is officially down 9.6% since we were up here. So nearly 10% uh, of a near correction um, in a fairly short time period. Again, not surprising, I said that five to 10 would absolutely not be um, off the table where we were. So we are just hovering at 10%. So for this to be considered a true correction in the S&P 500, that means we do have to hit 10%. Um, so right now, this is still considered a pullback, although I think it's very possible at this point that we will, we will get to 10% and beyond. And so just as reminders how moving averages work, um, moving averages tend to be lines of support and resistance for the market. And so this is our 20-day moving average, our 50-day moving average, and our 200 moving day average. So you can see once that initial correction set, we were really trading in a consolidated area here between the 200, I mean, sorry, the 20 and the 50-day, kind of acting as resistance up here and then support down here. Unfortunately, though, last week we did violate the 50-day moving average. So and actually, so we were here yesterday, and now we're, we're more like right here. So we're actually even below where we started on Monday. So our next line of support is all the way down here at the 200 moving day average. And if we were to hit that, that would equate to about a 7% additional sell-off. Not off the table right now that that could happen. Um, will it definitely happen? Not necessarily. I'm very interested to see what's going to happen over these next few days within the market specifically. But just, just so that we're clear, uh, now that we have broken out below the 50 day, we closed below the 50 day on Friday. That was a big deal that we were not able to get above that for the week and that we, we are a fair amount below the 50 day. Now it is not out of the realm of possibilities that we could come down to the 200 moving day average, which again would be about another 7% sell off at that point. Um, not saying that that's definitely going to happen, but that's just, those are things that we're watching. These are things that we've been concerned about for weeks and months just within the market itself. Um, you can see here, so we also, we remain on a money flow sell signal here. We saw a little bit of a pickup within the past two days. I expect that after today, um, likely we won't see much change. So we still, um, money flows are off. And so again, that just 
shows additional potential headwinds for the market, at least in the short term. And so this chart here, it's again, we are still talking about the S&P 500. It's just another graph again so that you can see our 50 day and our 200. So here we were on yesterday, this is where we closed. And so we're actually now down closer to here again, just kind of showing you that. This is important here. So one of the uh, technicals that we also track is relative strength within the indexes. And so when we go into a, a, a pullback or correction like we're in right now, for us to be able to take some additional positions, we have to see RSI or, or relative strength index kind of flip. And so right now we, we're down, we're fairly oversold at this point. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to wait for this number to get up closer to 60. We're at 43 right now. And so everything's kind of coinciding that there still may be a little more to go within this pullback before it's done. And so these are things that we're watching. Again, this was very healthy. This, this is, was expected. None of this has taken um, us by surprise as, as we've watched the technicals and things happen. And it's why we have been um, kind of stating caution over time about, you know, we talked about, you know, rebalancing, taking something off the table if you hadn't already done that because what we're seeing is absolutely um, expected. September is typically a tough month for the market to begin with. Put that in with a, an election year, that, um, a particularly contentious election year at that. And so, um, you know, we're going to continue to watch this and with the idea that, you know, we're expecting to take new positions soon. We just need to see that confirmation within the S&P 500. Let's talk about the NASDAQ. Okay, so with the NASDAQ here, it was even a more significant um, sell-off within the NASDAQ. So you can see way up here, the tippy top here, then that sell-off. So what happened was we came right to the 50-day moving average. Remember that tends to act as support. Then we kind of bounced off there, but we did last week finally break through the 50-day moving average. Um, and then today, actually, we were down 3% for the day, um, just in one trading day. And so right now the NASDAQ is down 12.3% uh, since September 2nd. So we are in a correction with the NASDAQ and uh, we're continuing to see that those losses accelerate um, time to time. So again, here we are with our 50 day. Here's our 200 moving day average. This is the next area of support that we're looking at. And again, we will just continue to kind of watch so it is not beyond the realm that we could come down to the 200. There is a way to go though with the NASDAQ yet. So, you know, we're just going to have to see what happens particularly over the rest of this week and into next week to kind of see. But again, you can see how quickly and again, but we were trading two standard deviations above our moving averages. And as a reminder, moving averages, they act as support, they act as resistance. They also act like a magnet. So the further we get, the more diverged we are from a moving average, the more likely it is that there'll be a swift reversion to bring us down. This is what we're seeing within the NASDAQ right here. So right, we came down to the 50 day, but that 200 moving day average is still quite diverged from there. So I expect that it's likely that we'll see an additional sell off within this index before it's all over. And then again, this is just another uh, way of looking at this. This is again showing us how we violated the 50 day. Here's our 200 day. Here's our relative strength, still fairly low. We are still, um, on the short term, we're actually quite oversold on both indexes, um, but still oversold long term. It just kind of goes to show you how extended and kind of how far away these indexes had gotten. Um, and so, you know, this is something here that we're watching relative strength at about 46 right now. Um, today, probably lower. Again, these numbers haven't been updated after today's sell-off. Again, we're, these are numbers though that we'll watch. When we see the relative strength begin to tip up the other way, we see positive price action, we will then be able to go in and take some additional positions. We kind of have them on the ready now, so we just want to make sure that we get the right entry point as we take them. So this pullback is everything that we were expecting. Um, I would say in a way we were even waiting for it. We knew that it was going to happen. It was why we've been so cautious with re-entry because we, we knew that the market would likely need to have some sort of a sell-off. And at this point, we just really want to make sure now that we time this appropriately because there's a difference between, and it's a fine line, and sometimes it's kind of hard to, um, to navigate buying the dip, as a lot of individual investors would say, versus trying to catch a falling knife. 
And so those are kind of, that's where we're at, that we want to be able to take these positions at this new entry point, but just make sure we do it prudently. Thought this was interesting. So this is a heat map from Monday. And so, you know, for weeks and weeks, I've been telling you that one of the major risks within the indexes right now is how super concentrated they were. NASDAQ, the S&P 500 was absolutely one of the most concentrated that it's been, certainly since the 70s. And that's all fine and good when these large companies, so Amazon, um, Google, Netflix, Facebook, you know, when all these mega tech companies are having great runs, that's great. But look at what happens to it when we have super down days, when you got Google, Facebook down over 3%, Amazon down over 2%. When your heat map looks like this, Apple down 1.6, Microsoft down almost 1.7. Um, this is what happens though. We see the opposite happen with the indexes as they drag them down very quickly. And so I just thought this was kind of a neat graphic to look at uh, regarding um, within the index and kind of what it looks like, especially as we're in the middle of a sell-off. So that being said, our model, our tactical model, our positions are still holding up extremely well. And so uh, that's one of the things I just kind of wanted to be able to show you. And so this blue line here, this is going to be the equity positions that we've taken within the tactical model since July, doing very well, averaging over 8.3%. And then the, um, our tactical model um, from that time, including the sell-off, because this was as of the close of yesterday, up 2.47% um, versus the S&P that's up 2.35, so just slightly outperforming the index. But here's the thing, we are only right now 25% in equities, and then the rest is in different types of, um, of bond strategies, as well as a little bit of cash still on the side, ready to deploy. So the idea is that we want to only be as aggressive as we need to be right now, especially knowing that it was likely that a pullback was coming like what we're experiencing. And so just to kind of show you though, this is the power of having the, the right relative strength, making sure that we're only choosing areas that have positive momentum, that we're avoiding the areas that have the negative momentum. And so it, it, over the long term it works. And so we were able to afford to be a little more conservative, especially upon re-entry, as long as we knew that we were in the right areas. And so as we're preparing to take some additional positions, um, once this pullback gives us confirmation that we can, we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be very strategic, very targeted in the areas that we choose to re-enter, and um, also being very targeted in the areas that we avoid, because the idea is that this is how we're able to outperform indexes over the long run. And it may mean that we gotta give up a little bit of performance at the beginning, and we're okay with that, because we know over the long run, it works and we'll be able um, to beat those indexes. But what we want is to make sure that we have the math, the rules, and the numbers kind of on our side before we do that. And so that's what we've been waiting for. I think this is, though, it's a great depiction, though, of how relative strength, positive momentum, um, how it works. And so, you know, we're excited. So I've had a couple of clients call me and say, do you see what's going on in the market? You know, are you worried? And um, well, I've referred them to come and check out my video because if you've been watching our videos and you know that we've been saying that this was going to happen, but no, so this is, this is not out of the ordinary. This is really just a good, healthy pullback that the market needed that we've been waiting for. And so now we're just gonna really uh, make sure that we have confirmation that we think that the pullback um, is at least mostly complete. And then we'll take those uh, positions. As always, if you have questions for me, you can email me, ashleyr at victoryfiduciary.com. You can check out our website, victoryfiduciary.com. Um, all my old videos are posted there as well as on our YouTube um, site. Um, also, uh, there's a lot of blogs I've written about different things in the market over the past few months. So I thank you so much for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great day.